Welcome to the video. Have you ever been working with a large template that has lots of master folders and subfolders for instruments? And, and you're constantly doing this, you're kind of clicking around and you're like, oh, I just want to collapse all of the folders and have, you know, my strings showing like this, uh, you know, the brass showing like this, instead of me having to individually close them. Or, or I could use that, you know, key command where I hold the button and then press the folder things, but then it collapses everything, and I don't really want that. I want to just be able to have everything like this, or just drill into a specific folder. Well, what if I told you you could you could literally do that by using a couple key commands? For example, here's two that I've already set up. Cubase allows you to do some pretty crazy things when it comes to building PLE commands and then chaining them together as a macro um, inside the key command window. And essentially what I'm going to show you today is the basics of it. You can quite easily go down a very deep rabbit hole uh, with this and get very complex with um, key commands that you can build, but sometimes they're a little bit more of a hassle than they than than they should be. Uh, and you have to be mindful about how Cubase tends to work with states that toggle between on and off when it's activating something, because um, these can cause issues. So the two macros, uh, sorry, the two PLE commands we're going to make essentially are going to collapse all the folders first, and then the second command will open up a specific folder. And this means that every time you switch between, you know, if I want to open up my percussion or my woodwinds, it's always going to use the close folder function first before it then activates the open folder function. And it will always provide you, provide you the um, view that you need. So to get to the PLE, you can come up here where this uh, visibility agent button is and then just go to project logical editor. Now we're going to create a filter target. To do this, you click the plus sign, and then from filter target, we're going to select container type. From container type, we're going to select uh, equal to, and then folder tracks. So that means Cubase is going to select all of the folder tracks in the project before it does whatever it is we want it to do to them. So for the action, we're going to click plus, and then from here, we're going to go to track operation, and then the operation is going to be folder and then parameter one, we're going to set this to close. So that means now when I click on this, Cubase will close all folders in the project. So this works similarly to when you hold control and you click a folder, except for the difference is that's a toggle function. So if I select that to toggle and click apply, it'll open all the folders. And if I click it again, it'll close all the folders, but we don't want to do that. So I'm going to set this to close and then save this as something that you can easily find. I always put my name like Marcus, and then I'll just put like folder close or something like that. I've already got this set up, so I don't need to save this again, but just save it something that you're going to be able to find easily in the key commands window. Now the next um, PLE command we need to create is one that will drill into a specific folder. So for this one, I want it to open specifically the BBC SO percussion folder. Now this is quite simple to do because it's basically an additional filter target and then we're just going to change the action target here. So let's add a filter target and we're going to set this to name and then contains and the name of the folder. So BBC SO Percussion. Okay, so that means Cubase is going to look for a folder track that has the name BBC SO Percussion and select it. Now, what do we want it to do? Once it's selected, we want it to open that folder. So again, action target, track operation, folder, and then open. So if I click apply, you'll see that Cubase opens up specifically that folder. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. So BB, uh, sorry, Marcus BBCSO perk folder open and click OK. So now that we've created our two PLE commands, we're going to go to edit and then go to the key commands window. At the bottom, if it doesn't show you the macros, just click on show macros here. And you'll see that I've already got two set up. You could duplicate these and just change one of the macros to save time when you're doing it for all the other stuff. But I will show you uh, from scratch how to do this. So we're going to create a new macro and I'm going to call this BBC SO Percussion. And now what we're going to do is add those two PLE um, commands that we created to this macro. So up here, I'm going to type in Marcus uh, folder close. That should be the one. 
Oh, actually, no, it doesn't like that, so we'll just put Marcus. If I can spell my own name right, that might help. Uh, Marcus. Um, let's go through here. So you can see here I've got Marcus folder close. And with that selected and with our macro selected, I'm going to click add. And you'll see it's added it into the chain here. And then the next one we're going to add in is that last ple command which was uh the bbc so perk folder open so when we bind this to a key and we you know hit the key it's going to close all the folders first and then it will search for that specific folder and open it for us so now all i need to do is type in bbc so percussion in the top here And you'll see under your macros folder, you'll find that your macros get stored here. Uh, and all we need to do is select this and assign it to a key. So I'm going to assign it to that. And as I say, if you've got something like a Steam Deck, then this uh, would be really, really useful because you can just bind everything to all the different buttons on there and click on and, and you know, and you're, away you go. So now that means when I click Control Shift Alt and A, it will show me my brass. If I do it with Z, it will show me the strings. And if I do it with S, it will show me the percussion. But the cool thing is, it's actually sh closing all of the other folders. And it doesn't really matter if I've got stuff open like this. Um, you know, if I if I want to just drill into a specific folder and hide all the other stuff, I can just do that, and it will always work for me, which is pretty cool. Now, as I say, you could go one step further with this, um, but you would need to organize your templates a little bit differently, as I, I think I mentioned previously. So uh, I would, instead of having a BBC SO percussion folder, if I had other libraries, I'd just have a percussion folder, and then inside I'd have a folder for like Tycos, um, auxiliary, symbols, uh, all that kind of stuff, and then I'd put the, the library folders, <coughs> excuse me, inside of those. So, for example... Um, let me just create a visual example here. So, um, okay, so if I create a folder that says, um, that the easiest way to do this because I can keep it open is this. So we'll create a master folder, let's say percussion, and then we'll create um, You know, so you've got all this kind of stuff inside of your percussion folder. Um, and then and what you could do is, you know, inside here, you'd have all your, your library stuff that contains symbols. So like ARC1 symbols, ARC2 symbols, uh, BBC SO percussion symbols, put all those patches inside of here. So when you're building your um, your folder commands to drill into things, you could, you could create an additional one or that lets you search specifically for the symbols folder. So it'll you know, collapse all the other stuff and show you the symbols folder with all your symbol tracks in um, that you can work with. So you could you could go down that route if you wanted to. The possibilities are endless, but it's always important to try and avoid the toggle functions with this because, as I say, I've run into a couple of problems with it um, when trying to work this with other macros that use toggle functions. So for me, this is the best way uh, to do it so far, but I will continue to sort of experiment with it and see, you know, or maybe you guys will experiment with it more and come up with other efficient ways to build a macro chain that allows you to do these cool things inside of Cubase. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you have, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, give it a thumbs down. If you've got any questions, comments, or constructive criticisms, then by all means, leave them in the comments box below and I'll do my best to get back to you. I know it's been some time since I've actually uploaded videos to the channel. I might do a separate video on the reasons why, um, but we'll save that for another day. So take care and I hope you're all well.